Paging all personnel. Code blue. Code blue. Co That's us. What a beautiful morning. All right, what is up, people? Welcome back. It is Friday night. I am getting ready to go to sleep. I'm starting in the ICU tomorrow, Saturday at 7 a.m. And I'm going to be working from Saturday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, yeah, so I will see you all in the morning. We're back home. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because I'm exhausted and I just wanna eat and kind of like just relax. But um, but anyways, today was probably my saddest day on any rotation. Um, you know, obviously the ICU is gonna have the sickest patients and we had some patients who were dying like very soon today and had to have those conversations with their families and their families were this was their first time they were actually hearing this so they were a bit depressing conversations um but i mean that's just the reality of it like i said i'm just gonna kind of eat and relax and try to get some good sleep for tomorrow so all right so it's sunday morning it's about 640 right now and I am about to roll on in. Just got to the hospital. Morning buddy. <laughs> so basically the way it works is <clears throat> we get there and then the night team signs out all the patients to us. We go over all the patients, any updates on the patients. Um, and then everyone gets together and we round on all the patients. We come up with plans, how we're going to treat them. You know, if anything changes, what are we going to do basically? Um, so let's see what they got going today. Okay. So we're in the break room. Um, we did our morning handoffs, kind of discussed, you know, everything that's relevant to the patients. And we've reviewed a few CAT scans and x-rays. I got a little bit of time here before we do our morning rounds, so I just snuck in here to do some questions. All right, so it's currently five o'clock. I just got a couple seconds to step away. It's been pretty hectic all day. Had a new patient come in with diabetic ketoacidosis. Their, their blood sugars were through the roof, like in the 900s. And, um, you know, this was a young person, so it was pretty interesting to see how they handle these kinds of situations. Okay, so we had a consult on a couple patients in the hospital. One patient had a giant mass in their upper lobe in their lung. Turns out they have a prior history of tuberculosis. Um, and we're thinking it might be uh, some type of rounded atelectasis, which is something I'd never heard of. So pretty cool to see that. Um, and then uh, while I was rounding on the, the pulmonary patients, I ran into the cardiologist who I'm also rotating with who had a patient um, with severe mitral regurgitation. So he told me, you know, to go see that patient and I was able to, um, you know, hear their murmur. So that was pretty cool. All right, so it is 7.37 and I'm just leaving the hospital. So I'm honestly so glad that for this month, I have it split between cardiology and ICU because this, I see rotation is pretty exhausting. Um, I'm only on my second day out of six, um, and I don't know how I'm gonna go home and study after this. All right, good morning. It is day three on ICU. Today is Monday, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm already over these 12 hour shifts. Ah. <sighs> 
So, so what even is the ICU, right? I mean, there's all this talk about it. Oh, hey, what's up? Me in the mirror. <laughs> um, but anyways, the ICU, it stands for intensive care unit, and that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's a place where people go to get much more intense care um, if they're sicker than the average patient in the hospital. All right, so we just got here and it's Monday and I can already tell it's gonna be a hell of a lot busier and more hectic. There's just already a ton of people here. So let's get it. So while we were doing our rounds, um, the ICU doc heard a murmur on one of the patients and asked me to tell him what it was and I was successful in diagnosing an S3 heart murmur. All right, so 7.10 and we're out of here. So today was pretty awesome because it's the first day where I was able to see patients who were insanely sick and sedated and on, um, you know, just intubated and on um, mechanical ventilation. Today's the first day I actually got to see some of those patients start to get better. And we actually extubated a person today. So extubating a person is just essentially when you take the breathing tube out of their trachea um, and they start breathing on their own again. So, you know, they've been doing much better and now they finally don't need to have assistance for breathing. And it's pretty amazing to see some of these patients who are like on the edge of death come back and start to recover. So today was really, really awesome. What is up? Welcome back. It is Tuesday, day four out of six on ICU. So honestly, I definitely don't mind getting to the hospital, you know, early like seven o'clock it's just the fact that i have to leave at like seven o'clock that really sucks so normally on my rotations i come you know i'll wake up early and uh, i'm usually not until eight or nine so i can study in the mornings i can review material i can do questions um and then i have little breaks throughout the day where i can review them and i can um you know, do some Anki cards or anything really, but then I get off usually like three to five. This rotation, I'm here at seven, I'm here till seven, it's usually a little bit later. And it's like, I just have no time to do anything. All right, so I was officially part of my first code today. It was absolutely chaotic. And I will tell you guys all about it as soon as I get home, because I have to order some food. Paging all personnel, code blue. I repeat, code blue. Is this a joke? Houston, we have a code. Hear that, people? Code blue, code blue. Code blue, co that's us. That's us. All right, so we're back home. It's almost 10 o'clock. I'm pretty exhausted. But here I am, 10 o'clock, and let's talk about this code. So I'm sitting there in the break room with one of my friends who's on the rotation with me, and I'm just doing some questions. And all of a sudden you hear on the speaker, code blue, code blue, three north, code blue, everyone. Like, when I like look at her, and we're like, oh shit. Like, this is really happening. Like, uh, you know, we're gonna be a part of this, right? So we get up and we start running and everyone's just running. So we just kind of join the crowd of people who are just running. And I, I don't even really know where I'm going. So then the ICU doc, I see him come out of like the corner of this hallway and just turn the corner. I'm like, all right, that's who I'm following. So we run up these stairs and we like, we're just hustling up them as fast as we can. We get up to the third floor and we turn and we're like, we as soon as the first person he sees is like, he asked him, is it a true code? They're like, yes, it's it's real, like whatever, right? So when we, we keep running, we keep running, we go to the room. And um, so I guess, so we get there, okay? And the patient's like not dead, right? The patient's still with it, but the patient was in an irregular rhythm, long story short, and um, it was either presumed ventricular tachycardia, um, which is not a 
a rhythm you want to be in, or it was a su it was a super ventricular tachycardia superimposed on a right bundle branch block because this patient had a significant history of coronary artery disease and his heart was all he had just undergone like open heart surgery a couple months prior. I don't know. There was a lot going on, but I would say maybe not a full code in the sense of there weren't people jumping on this person and doing chest compressions, but it was still very intense. And when I left the ICU, um, they had given this patient this medicine called amiodarone, which is a common antiarrhythmic medicine to try to get people out of these, you know, rhythms like this. Um, and he was still kind of in this weird tachycardia. So I don't fully know what happened. I plan on getting the follow-up tomorrow morning. And uh, when I figure it out, I'll let you guys know. But I need to go to bed. Otherwise, I'm going to be up way too late and going exhausted. But honestly, that's pretty much been every day, this rotation, so... What a beautiful morning. Well, it is Wednesday morning and you know you're getting old when you drink one beer and you actually kind of feel a little bit hungover. All right, so I'm just walking out to my car to get my wallet so I can get a, a coffee. Um, just had the cr like the craziest thing I've ever seen happen and I will tell you guys about it more in a little bit. Okay, so we had a patient come in and really severe lactic acidosis and their respirations were all off. They weren't um, adequately oxygenating their blood. Their, their oxygen saturation was dropping really low. So the patient was getting ready to be intubated. And when they intubate someone, they t they'll give them a, like a, a mild, a sedative that kind of knocks them out like a very short acting one so that way and a, and a paralytic so they don't move a lot and they don't fight you when you try to put a tube down their throat so that they can breathe so when this patient got the paralytic and got the sedative she she started vomiting so immediately right as they went to intubate her vomit came up and started coming out her nose out of her mouth so it just like it was totally chaotic um you know because you're trying to this patient's not breathing now because she's she's paralyzed and she's vomiting so you're worried about her choking on her vomit and inhaling her vomit and then following up with that aspiration pneumonia which can be lethal as well so anyways the icu doc was able to suction out all of the vomit and get her intubated very very quickly before her oxygen drops too low and she's breathing now and everything's okay but it was just an absolutely insane moment definitely the most intense so far Okay, it is 7.12, we just left. Um, I'm going to the gym and I'm not gonna work out. I'm literally just gonna sit in the sauna and release some endorphins. All right, so we're headed to the gym and you know, I really wanna work out or like go for a swim or something, but I have to get up at like six, probably at the latest again, so. You know, it's just, I've just kind of taken the L during this week where I'm on ICU and I've, I've already mentally made the decision that I'm not gonna go to the gym. But if I go to the sauna, at least it'll make me sweat and it'll wear me out and I'll just come home and just pass out instantly. All right, we're back home. It's nine o'clock. I'm finally about to grub out on some wings and then get some shut eye. So I'll see you bright in the morning. All right, people, it's day six out of six on ICU, 1040. We did our rounds. We talked to some, some families. Some things are going good. Some things are going really, really bad. Thus is the ICU. What can you do, you know? What is up? Welcome to my bed. It is nine o'clock on Thursday night, and I finished my six shifts in the ICU today. All right, on that note, it's a wrap for my six days or 72 hours in the ICU. Crazy experience. Learned a ton of stuff, saw a bunch of crazy stuff. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you wanna watch other stuff kinda of like this. But on that note, I am out, I'm gonna go stuff. And that's gonna conclude the video. Here comes my roommate. Oh. <laughs> See you all next time.